Uh, first of all, I, I would like to thank the organizer for such a great organization of this conference. Uh, thank also for allowing me to present this contribution together with my colleague, John Selesnikov. Uh, he's a regular at the association's conferences, uh, not me, in this case, it's my, my first time. Uh, I come from the University of Granada in Spain, uh, where um, uh, artificial intelligence and slow studies are being enhanced uh, through a research unit created in 2018 named Digital Society, Security and Protection of Rights. Uh, this is an open research unit aiming to promote joint research initiatives, especially with researchers belonging to this association. Uh, this is the, the, the name of my uh, of of our uh, of our contribution today is making intelligent online dispute resolution tools available to self-represented litigants in the public justice system. Um, our contribution focuses on the technological changes being made to justice systems to support the vulnerability of self-represented litigants. Um, this situation uh, of the self-represented litigants is becoming more and more frequent and uh, is increasing in both common law and civil law justice systems. Uh, the aim of this presentation is first describing the use being made by some jurisdiction of combined ODR and AI tools for self-represented litigants, and second, to promote the debate on the ethical governance of making these tools available to self-represented litigants. Uh, to this, we will follow an European approach. Uh, the point of departure, uh, or point of departure, is that ODR, online dispute resolution, is moving more and more from ADR to courts. Uh, ODR allows users to appear in court on their own without legal assistance. ODR allows the users to file a claim, to follow a case, to negotiate with the other party, to have the intervention of a mediator, and also to have a querying uh, through video conference, telephone, face-to-face. -face. Uh, but it is possible to move a step forward, and some jurisdictions have begun to provide justice users with intelligent user-centric ODR systems incorporating information and assessments AI tools, diagnosis AI tools, and predictions tools. Uh, the, the important thing is that this is in order so that these students can be better prepared to deal with a direct negotiation conducted online with the aim of enabling the dispute to be resolved without the need for a court ruling. Um, we have some examples uh, stepping forward. Um, here we have the, the task platform rest here. Uh, the, where the parties are informed of rules such as those for dividing property, child support, and standard arrangements for visiting rights so that they could agree on the basis of informed consent. The, also, we have the, the British Columbia Civil Resolution Tribunal. Uh, the CRT is the most significant current widely uh, ODR system that comes closest to providing a full suit of dispute resolution services. It offers the di diagnosis of the dispute by providing an expert system decision tree and provides legal information and tools such as customer letter templates. Between uh, 2017 and 2018, China has also created three new internet courts in Hansu, Beijing, and Guangzhou. These courts only have a jurisdiction over internet related cases. Litigation risk assessment aims to help the party without legal knowledge to identify and exclude common litigation risk, thereby reducing unnecessary losses. Meanwhile, the assessment can make the party aware that litigation is risky and costly and guide the party to choose ADR or diversified dispute resolution. The system can automatically generate a complaint letter by simply selecting the suitable response options. There are also interesting projects in Estonia and Singapore. Uh, for instance, Singapore is developing an ambitious online 
system initially only for injuries arising from motor vehicle, vehicle accidents. An outcome simulator will provide guidance to potential claimants prior to the commencement of the proceedings, helping them to decide on offers from insurance companies. The aim of is for parties to first use the technology to reach amicable settlements without professional legal advisors. In order, in order to give an answer to the situation of the self-represented litigants, the justice system should be adapted to, to support them. Uh, some of the uh, facilities refers to the use of AI tools. The system should allow users to enter information, ask them for appropriate data and provide for templates to initiate the dispute. The system should provide information on how important it is to act in a timely manner and where to send the dispute. But the system should also provide tools for reality testing, both article reports of cases, copies of legislation and videos, and the most important thing, the possibility of having information about best alternative to a negotiated agreement in order to promote the direct settlement. Five more uh, minutes, please. OK, sure. Uh, communication tools are also important. A decision support tool is the disputant cannot resolve their conflict. Software using game theory or AI can be used to facilitate trade-offs and drafting software is also important. Um, we, uh, in Europe, there is a concern about ethical issues and government related to AI. Uh, it is well known the European Ethical Charter on the use of AI in judicial system and their environments but we have also documents in the field of the European Union, like the, the opinion of the European Economic and Social Committee, the digital revolution in view of citizen needs and rights, the white paper of the European Commission on artificial intelligence, the resolution of the European Parliament with recommendation to the Commission on a framework for ethical aspect of AI, the communication from the Commission uh, um, called Digitalization of Justice in the European Union. And finally, the most important document today is the proposal for a regulation laying down harmonized rules on artificial intelligence. The, the position of the European Ethical Charter is clear. Um, it's a myth that there are inherent risks in these technologies, and these tools could create a new form of normativity. Uh, um, the report is uh, skeptical about considering this compatible with the individual right ensuring in the European Convention of Human Rights, um, fair trial, the right to an independent and impartial tribunal. Uh, so it's not clear the, 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 this compatibility. Uh, the position of the European Commission is a little bit more um, open. Uh, is considered also that the proposal requirements in the white paper of increased transparency, human oversight, accuracy, and robustness of the systems aim to facilitate their beneficial use while ensuring that fundamental rights, including non discrimination, based on say, racial, ethnic, so it would be possible to respect the due process principles. Uh, and the position of the new proposal for regulation uh, is open, but it's not completely clear. So it, it is uh, uh, make a separation between both possibilities of using AI. Um, uh, so, but at the end, the decision would be in the hands of the states. We submit that neither the, uh, the recent official documents of the European Union nor the ethical charter on the use of the AI in judicial system and the environment deal directly with the admission of AI tools aimed at enabling the party to assess their legal position. Because uh, self-represented litigants generally lack legal skills and in view of the objective to encourage negotiation, we submit John and me, that this issue of technology for this purpose should be considered high risk. 
However, in view of the beneficial impact of the functioning of the judicial system, it is necessary to identify the technical limits and the safeguard to be met by the machines offered by the public justice systems to self-represented litigants. From this point on, the need arises to find out what information should be provided, which technology should be used, and what safeguards need need to be put in place. But this is the topic to another conference. Thank you very much for your attention. And uh, John and me, we will be uh, pleased to, to answer the questions. Thank you very much, Mr. Uh, Fernando Esteban de la Rosa. Uh, it's a quite interesting uh, subject. Well, I have some questions for you. And actually it's, taking uh, from your conclusion. So what are your suggestions of safeguards to enable the use of AI by judges and at the same time avoid bias against minorities or the development of rule of law, uh, meaning the evolving interpretation of the law. For instance, the case Brown uh, against Board of Education in US, if it was based on AI, uh, all, all those best precedents, best cases, uh, maybe it would be an uh, impact to evolve the interpretation of phrases in the US. So that's the question. Uh, I say, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, Jojo. Can, can I say on this? Yeah. I mean, Brown versus Board of Education is something I've written a lot about. It's an incredibly important case because the basic premise was in 1896, the Supreme Court of the United States in Plessy versus Ferguson said segregated schools are okay as long as they're equal. In 1954, in Brown versus the Board of Education, they said we have observed over the last 58 years that segregated schools are not equal. So we can't allow uh, segregated schools. Now, the basic point coming out is that AI should never, you should not have robots making decisions. And none of us are actually arguing that. It has got to be the human judge that makes the decision. But the AI can help the human judge make much better decisions. The AI can also be transparent. You can look at the way. Uh, often judicial decision making is not transparent. With computer systems, you can look at how they reached a decision, and if you're not happy with the process, you can undo it. Uh, do you want to answer as well, Fernando? No. Yeah, um, only, only to, to say that uh, the the possible um, the possible measures in order to, to control to submit to, to control uh, it depends on on the technology used but because uh, one thing is uh, uh, the, to to, to develop an expert system, an expert system that is, is a question of programming. And other thing is uh, using machine learning. It's completely different. Um, indeed, uh, it is uh, important to, to, to decide which is the technology, uh, the best technology in order to, to offer um, information to the self-represented litigants because, uh, uh, because of the different uh, functioning of this, uh, of this technology. So, but uh, for instance, for spark systems that I, I probably would say that uh, it is better to use uh, expertise and than, than um, technology of machine learning in order to inform users. Um, maybe it, it would be possible to uh, to use some of the recommended um, uh, of the in the white in the white uh, book of the European Commission, like. Um, concerning possible testing of application and the need to provide relevant documentation on the purpose and functionalities, uh, um, maintaining the possibility to correct errors and providing information to you so that the answer given by the machine may not necessarily match the answer that will be given by a judge during a case. All of these are uh, uh, measures that uh, it could uh, bear, it could justify the use of this kind of technology. 
Okay, uh, another question. Uh, you said that the self-represented litigants uh, push the limits of judges' impartiality and that ODR tools may overcome this issue. Uh, in your opinion, the fact that the court provide information like uh, the British Columbian uh, Tribunal uh, in such a way that the parties may obtain a prediction of the outcome, even though meant for the preliminary stage of direct negotiations for look at online, uh, can also affect uh, court's impartiality in the sense that this prediction may uh, cause a machine bias. Well, I'm, I might say nothing is ever unbiased. We all have social, political, cultural values. Now, the, the, the whole idea of you know, self-represented litigants have always been at a disadvantage compared to those people who get good professional advice. So having contacts, having money is always a benefit in any system. What we're saying is that the use of uh, uh, online dispute resolution systems and systems to support litigants in ADR is going to improve their chances. It's not going to make it equal. It's not going to make it perfect, but it will provide opportunities that have not been previously available. And do you think AI, in a sense, in the system, the justice system, uh, how can we avoid the machine bias? I mean, all the prediction, all the drafts or the propositions made by the system that is uh, thought as more neutral, can, can it happen? How, how we can manage the safeguards? Do you think it's only to use, uh, not using in the, in the justice system, the learning machines, only expert system? Is there a solution? It won't be perfect, but there are, there are human biases. That what we, you know, that's the whole legal profession and certainly the legal academic profession. What we're trying to do is to improve it. And the, the one way to bias is to make everything transparent. And what I'm arguing is that the, the legal system has generally been a mumbo jumbo, which none professionals don't understand. Uh, Technology, particularly expert systems, rule-based systems, is going to help you understand this process. 